Hello, Salesforce Ohana, Walters954 here. Welcome to the Ultimate Guide to Salesforce Formula Fields. This series of videos is going to be a snippet from my course where I show you how to master Salesforce Formula Fields. I'm putting this out here for free for all of my Salesforce family. This course will take you through the basics of what a formula field is, creating your first formula field, going over the must know formula functions and more. At the end, if you want to take your formula knowledge to the next level, following real life examples and projects to become a formula fiend, check out the description below where the course is discounted for only $5. If you want more video tutorials like this, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Leave a comment down below on some advanced formula techniques that you use. Thank you all so much for watching and remember, I believe in you. In this video, we will be learning how to use the formula checkbox. The scenario that we are working with is when the net income of our sale or our opportunity is less than zero, that means that we are upside down or underwater on our sale, meaning that we are going to be selling the car at a loss because the car is worth less than what we are selling it for. All right, let's get into it. We are going to hit the cog and hit edit object which will skip a few steps and get us straight into the opportunity object in the editor. Hit new, formula field. Let's name our field underwater. And we can see here for our checkbox, it needs to calculate a Boolean value. Boolean values are true or false. Our checkbox will be checked if we return true. Our checkbox will be false if we return false. And we will see those really quick examples next and then go into our actual formula itself. Once again, we are in the simple editor for now. As we move along, we will slowly progress into the advanced editor. What I want to do to start is to make sure that we understand the true and false nature of the checkbox. What I will do is just type in false into this formula field and go through all of the steps to save it. Then I'm gonna look back onto the record, refresh the page, and we should see a checkbox appear and it's called underwater and currently it is unchecked. If we go back to our field and enter in true instead, Go back to our record, hit save. When we refresh our record, we can see now with putting true into the formula editor makes the record true. When we look at all the other opportunities, this value will be true as well because that is what we put inside of the formula field. It's going to be true across the board. I'm gonna pull up a report of all the opportunities in the system to solidify that the formula field is calculating across all opportunities and we have said that all the opportunities will have true for the underwater value. We can see here that all of the opportunities have true. Now, back at our formula, we want this to actually calculate based on the fields that are on our opportunity. What we are going to do is amount minus the title cost. The value of that subtraction, if it is less than zero, then we will want to return true. Otherwise, we want it to be false. We will use the less than symbol and zero. One quick note is order of operations. We want the amount and title cost to calculate first, so we will put parentheses around it. So if this calculation is less than zero, this entire equation will evaluate to true. We are asking the question, is amount minus total cost less than zero? 
If this evaluates to true, then the checkbox will be checked. If it evaluates to false, then the checkbox will not be checked. Let's go ahead and check our syntax. Perfect, and then let's do our quick save. Now let's go back to the opportunity that we we're working on. Refreshing our page, we can see that the underwater checkbox is now false because the net income is not a negative number or it is not less than zero. To make our formula evaluate to true, let's go ahead and add an extra zero to our title cost. We can see that one, our formula field for underwater is now true. The $1,000 amount that we are selling this car for minus the title cost, which is $10,000, is a negative number. This is how negative numbers, if you didn't know, in currency fields, display in currency fields with the parens around it. So the net income is negative $9,000, which means we are underwater in our sale. Looking back at our report, We can see that only one of our opportunities has underwater checked to be true because it is the only one that has a negative value in the net income. Really quickly, just to clean this formula field up a little bit, we do not need to calculate amount minus title cost over again because we have a formula field that is doing it already. So let's just reference that formula field which is on our opportunity object and do this calculation. Always make sure to check our syntax. We are golden there, do our quick save. And when we refresh the page, nothing should actually change because we were copying that calculation, but we are referencing a formula field that has the calculation we needed so we don't have to copy it and replicate the information. If the net income calculation ever changes, it will also change for our underwater calculation that we're using. Next up, we'll be going over the date formula field. In this video, we will be creating a formula date field, which will give us a 30 day mark before our close date so that we can finalize all of our paperwork and just generally be aware that this opportunity should be closing within the next 30 days. Let's get into it. We are going to hit our cog at the top right edit the object to jump straight into the opportunity. Going to hit new formula. Let's call this 30 days to close. We can see that the default example that Salesforce provides here is going to be very similar to what we want to do in our formula. Let's click date. We want to manipulate the close date subtract that by 30 days. One thing I want to note here is that this formula is expecting the type date. So if we try to put in something like 30 by itself, which is technically a number and hit next or check the syntax, we are going to see that we get this error. And this basically says that the formula was giving us the type number and we expected the type date. So if we add the rest of our formula back in, check our syntax, we can see that it evaluates correctly. What we're doing is taking the close date we are minusing the number 30, which translates to 30 days, and that will give us 30 days before the close date. If we use the plus sign, we will do 30 days plus the close date. Let's go ahead and get this on the record. We can see our close date is 1225, and our 30 days before close is 1125. If we change our close date to be the fourth, 
we can see that our close date changes to 11.4. Having a field similar to this is very powerful when you're doing reporting. Let's go on our opportunity report and filter by the upcoming closed opportunity for the month of November. When we do that, we can see that there's one opportunity whose close date is 30 days before in November. Another great use of this is to set the filter to be this month, knowing that this particular month that we are working on, we need to focus on these sets of opportunities in this report because they should be closing next month. Next up, we will be doing some date time calculations. In this video, I will be creating a date time formula field. The scenario for this is we have a sale appointment that is next week at 12 p.m. And what we need to do is have some sort of reminder that the day before, or let's say maybe an hour before, we need to drive to that appointment to sell our car or prepare, maybe wash the car before that appointment. Let's jump into the object manager and check this out. So we are going to hit new to create our formula field. The basic example that Salesforce has here is next equals now plus one, which is getting into some of the more advanced aspects of using the now function and some of the functions that are inside of the formula editor. That's too advanced for what we're trying to cover in this video, but we will be covering that in later ones. So for now, haha, fun, we are going to select the date time. Let's pick the field name to be prepare car. And what we want to do is take our sales appointment field and minus one from it. Hopefully that will give us an hour before the appointment is due. As always, we are going to check our syntax. Refreshing our page to now see our value. And one thing you can do to force a refresh onto the formula fields is to just change the values completely. We can see here that the negative one did not change the hours field, it changed the date. We did not want this, so let's go back into the formula. hit edit. To reduce this formula by an hour, we need to create a smaller calculation to calculate the hours. So the formula goes like this, open parentheses, n divided by 24. What this is doing is taking n, which is the number of hours, dividing it by 24 to produce a decimal that will do the subtraction to the time amount. For example, if we want to go back by one hour, we will delete n in here and put one. So that's one divided by 24, and we're gonna do the subtraction from the sales appointment minus whatever that yields that decimal. There you have it, the prepare car formula field is showing 11 a.m. instead of 12 p.m., so that's one hour before the sales appointment. Very similar to the date process, we can run some sort of report or automated reminders off of this value to send out you know, email alerts or something like that so we can prepare an hour in advance for the next appointment that is going out. In the next video, we will be going over the number formula field